Hello everyone, good day to you and I hope you are all being happy, safe and healthy at your respective houses. So in this video, I'll be your resource speaker and I'll be talking about mathematics and decision making in business. So before I share to you some of the insights I have regarding the topic given to me, let me introduce myself to you first. I am Miss Carla Joyce B. Navarrete and I graduated with a degree in Bachelor in Business Teacher Education way back in 2014 in the Polytechnic University of the Philippines Quezon City Campus and currently I am pursuing a degree in Master in Business Teacher Education. So I'm still working on it. So I'm a work in progress regarding that uh, program. And I am a licensed professional teacher since 2014. And regarding my job, I am working at DepEd as a junior high school teacher. So I teach technology and livelihood education. Then, I'm also a part-time educational journal writer. So, hopefully, uh, with these endeavors, I uh, I was engaged with and currently engaging with, ayan, I will be able to share to you my insights regarding the topic that we will be discussing in this video. But, maybe, uh, aside from these five endeavors I had, my experience as a previous JM2S or just my two cents perfume reseller would uh, help me to share to you what you need to learn about the topic that we have in this video. So, let us talk about the following. Topic 1 will focus on mathematics in the modern world. Topic 2 is about decision making and business management. So, let's start with our first topic which is about mathematics in the modern world. So, for our first topic which deals about mathematics in the modern world, I will focus on sharing to you how am I applying mathematics in my personal life and in my job as a teacher. So, as you could see in the picture, it says keep calm because math is everywhere. So, most of us when we say math, we are... We are having a heavy feeling because we deal with computation, numbers, formulas, and that is what we automatically mean when we say math. Formula ka agad, diba? So, but we have to be uh, aware that mathematics is more than that. It's not just about computation and merely numbers. So, for me, as a teacher and as an individual person, I apply mathematics in my life as well. How? So first, kaya nga na nabanggit ko sa inyo kanina, I am teaching technology and livelihood education. So, there's math in cooking. Diba? Magluluto ka na lang ng masarap na pagkain. There's math in there. Paano? Of course, yung measurement ng ingredients, yung quantity ng ingredients sa pagsasama-samahin mo, yung portion nun, it could have an effect to the taste or quality of the food that you will be cooking. So, that is math. Diba? Yung pagkocompute, how much will you spend for that particular Variant or particular dish, di ba? Magkano yung magagastos mo kada serving ng pagkain na hinanda mo? That is math. So, meaning, in simple cooking, the LD teacher ako, but I'm dealing with math, di ba? Aside from that, there is also math in dressmaking. Kasi ito yung mga usual na tinuturo ko eh. So, dressmaking, paano nagkaroon ng math dyan? Taking of body measurement, di ba? So, yung tamang... Uh, understanding ng units of measurement. Importanting importante yan sa dressmaking. Like for example, yung difference ng, difference ng inch and centimeter. That could have a great effect on the quality of the outfit or garment that you will be making or constructing. And that is math. Diba? Yung unit of measurement na yon, Yung mga quantity ng tela, quantity ng mga materials na kakailanganin mo. That is very important. And that uh, uses math. Diba? And as an individual person or as a teacher, as a teacher, I also use math in grades computation. So I also deal with numbers. I also deal with computation. But 
syempre, ang ginagamit ko lang naman is yung basic operations like the addition and then the multiplication kasi yan yung madalas namin gamitin. But also, I deal with averaging, I also deal with percentage, I deal with um, weighted mean. Ayan, so mga math yun na ginagamit ko siya sa pagkocompute ng grades. If I don't have that understanding, when will I use addition, when will I use multiplication, when will I use the weighted mean, if I don't understand percentage, hindi ako makakapag-compute ng grades ng maayos. Diba? So, I use math. It's part of my life as a teacher. And as a person, I use math in budgeting. Diba? Budgeting my time and then finances. Especially finances, diba? I have to keep track with my expenses. Diba? Um, I have to make sure aling portion ng expenses ko yung pinakamalaki ko pinagkakagastusan. Ito ba pinagkakagastusan ko na to is worth it? How many percent of my salary goes with this uh, expense? So that is math. And having that knowledge of percentage, mas madali ko nakikita ano yung mas higit na pinagkakagastusan ko, ano dapat yung i-prioritize ko once na ma-receive ko yung sahod ko, diba? So that is math. So Math is really everywhere. It's part of our lives. So, maski ako as a teacher, as a person, I use math. Okay? So, in business, we also apply math. But, aside from personal usage, math can also be found on business. It is applied on business as well. As you can see, there is business mathematics. But when we talk about business mathematics, more of percentage naman. Ganyan. Uh, computation ng interest, percentage discount, ganyan ang uh, gamit ng math when we talk about business mathematics. But aside from that, pag pinag-usapan natin yung relationship ng mathematics and business, there's accounting. Accounting, yung iniisip nila pag sinabing accounting, it's a math subject. But no, uh, accounting is a different discipline. It's a different subject wherein it uses math. So, there is unapplied mathematics on accounting. Kasi ang focus mismo ng accounting is uh, cash inflow and outflow. Yung paggalaw ng pera sa business mo, yung pagpasok at paglabas. But for you to understand the inflow and outflow of cash in your business. May math doon. But the, that is just basic addition and subtraction. Especially kapag ka nagbabalanse na tayo. Ano yun? More of addition and subtraction yung ginagamit. But still, that is math. Diba? Second, inventory management. So, inventory management, uh, how much of your products have been used, have been uh, got them out of your factory. So, yung mga nailabas na, counting yun. So, that is math. Diba? Another is marketing. Even in marketing, you also deal with math. So, yung range, yung bracket nung yung market of people na pagbebentahan mo. Sino yung mas marami? Sino yung greater dun sa inyong customers or market? Sino yung mas marami sa kanila? Yung mga bata ba? Yung mga teenagers ba? O yung mas ad, uh, mas matatanda? So, yung greater than and less than, that is math. Diba? Sales forecasting. So, like for example, if you were able to make leche flan, diba? Kung nakapagluto ka ng leche flan, tapos nakagawa ka ng 20 tubs nun, ibibenta mo siya for 50 pesos each, so that's 50 times 20. So, ma-forecast mo, ma-anticipate mo, magkano yung sale mo. That is math. 50 times 20, 1,000. So, ganun siya. So, there is math in there. And lastly, financial analysis, of course. Hindi mo makikita kung nagiging successful ang business mo hindi kung hindi ka magkakaroon ng analysis when it comes to your finances. Okay? Diyan din papasok yung accounting, technically, di ba? Uh, how much how are you earning? How much are you uh, spending for you to make a product? And after making the product, pag binenta mo na siya, magkano yung iyong uh, kinita? So, that is math, di ba? Application ng math yun. So, whether it's in your personal lives or in your work, ayan, business, there is math. Okay? And we are very lucky nowadays kasi there are different tools. Okay? There are different tools na pwede na nating magamit when it comes to computation. Of course, yung calculator. 
the Excel, the, the, those are very helpful tools para makuha natin yung tamang sagot pag nagko-compute tayo. But, kahit meron kang tools like calculator and Excel to compute for you, if you do not know when to use the addition, if you do not know when to use the subtraction, if you do not know the difference between greater than and less than and equal, if you do not understand how percentage work, if you do not know what average means, hindi mo makukuha yung gusto mong sagot. Kahit meron ka pa pong tool. So therefore, we must really need to study mathematics. Kasi it will teach us how to deal with problems and which possible solutions are most applicable sa mga situations or problems given to us. So, no matter what endeavor you are engaged with, there will be mathematics always. Okay? Iba-iba lang yung complexity ng mathematics na naandyan. But still, ang pinupoint out is there is mathematics. So, therefore, we should not see mathematics as a subject wherein nag-compute ka in numbers lang. Mathematics is more than that. Hindi lang siya pagko-compute ng mga numbers, hindi lang siya pagkakabisado ng formula. Okay? It's more of understanding the problem and finding solution to that problem. So, in that kind of thinking, mathematics subject yung makakatulong nun sa atin. So, keep calm and love math. Bakit? Because math subject is the subject that will teach you to be problem solvers. Kasi sa dami ba naman ng problems, di ba, na pinepresent sa mathematics subject? Yes, it will teach you have how to be problem solvers. But, you have to think na yung mathematics, mathematic problems is, hindi lang yun yung focus niya na sinosolve mo yung problem na yun. But, it trains your mind. Yun kasi yung focus nun. It trains your mind how to think na makakasolve ka ng problem. Okay? Aside from that, love math because it teach you how to be analyst. Kasi hindi mo naman masasolve ang isang problema kung hindi mo ina-analyze ang isang bagay, di ba? So, ia-analyze mo muna. O, oh, ito yung given. Meron siyang ganitong apple, meron siyang ganitong orange. So, ilang lahat ng putas niya. So, that is analysis. Because of math, your mind will be trained to analyze things, di ba? Aside from that, love math because it helps you to become evidence seekers. Di ba? Evidence seekers meaning... Bakit ganito yung sagot? Bakit ito yung final answer? And your solution, that would be the evidence. That is an example of evidence. So, hindi ka magsisettle sa isang bagay o hindi mo tatanggapin yung isang bagay na sinabi sa'yo kasi yun siya. But instead, o paano mo nasabi yun? Anong basis nun? That is evidence. And you were able to have that kind of thinking because mathematics taught you that. Okay? And love math because... It helps you to become abstract thinkers. Diba? Abstract thinkers yung mas nakikita mo talaga yung connection, yung pattern ng mga connection ng mga bagay sa isang ba situation. Diba? Kasi sa problem solving, makikita mo, kailangan makita yung relationship ng mga bagay na in-state dun sa iyong uh, problem na kailangan mong isolve. Tapos sa mo identify yung given and then you will propose a solution and then come up with a final answer. Ganun din sa mga situations natin sa buhay, not just in work, not just in your personal life, not just in business, ayan. So talagang kinakailangan natin yung abstract thinking to find patterns or connections sa mga bagay-bagay. And mathematics could help us to train our mind to think like that. Okay? And lastly, love math because it helps you to become critical and logical thinkers. Hindi ka basta, ito yung solution, ito yung gawin natin. But no! You think critically, pinag-iisipan mo mabuti yung bagay. Okay? Based on the given, based on the solution, ayan. So, kasi itong mga qualities na to, yung pagiging problem solvers ninyo, yung pagiging analysts ninyo, yung pagiging evidence seeker ninyo, abstract thinkers, and critical and logical thinkers, lahat ng mga skills na yan is very important for you to come up with a good decision. Okay? You will not be able to come up with a good decision kung hindi nyo siya pinag-iisipang mabuti. At pag sinabi natin pag-iisip ng mabuti, this is what we mean. You analyze. You look for evidences. You find patterns. Diba? You think critically and logically for you to solve problems. And mathematics teach us to think that way. Okay? So, you, you should view mathematics more than just a subject of 
numbers, formulas. So, hindi siya ganun lang. Okay? So, pag nakakita kayo ng isang problem dyan, math problem na kailangang isolve, huwag mo siya tignan as numbers lang. Huwag mo siya tignan as a computation task lang. Look at that as a challenge para i-train yung mind ninyo. Okay? So, that ends our topic one. Okay? So, mathematics is part of our everyday lives. Kahit ano pong gawin ninyo, magiging bahagi yan ng buhay ninyo. And lahat naman ng uh, ginagawa natin is pinag-iisipan natin, pinag na natin. And for us to come up with that decision, we must train our mind na mag-isip ng mabuti. Ayan. So, bakit natin inumpisahan sa appreciation ng math? Kasi nga po, math subject will teach you how to think critically, analytically, logically. Um, kasi lahat ng mga yon, they are very important for you to be good decision makers. Ayan. Kasi having a good decision making skill is very important in business management, especially marketing. Diba? So, pag sinabi kasi nating marketing, it's more of paano mo ipaparating o ipopromote yung product mo sa tao. So, there are a lot of decisions that you have to make regarding that question. And kung hindi mo na-train ng maayos yung utak mo, yung isip mo, kung paano mag-isip ng tama at maayos, you will not be able to come up with good decisions. Not only in your business, but also in your life. So, what are these things that we are deciding about kapag ka tayo ay nasa business? Especially sa marketing. Ayan. So, marketing decision making. So, ano ba yung mga pinag-decisionan natin? Number one is selection of product. Okay? So, what are the products that you will be selling? In my case, I don't actually have the selection of product because isa lang naman siya. Perfume lang talaga yung kailangan namin i-benta during that time. And wala naman siyang, uh, I mean, regarding sa size, anong size yung i-benta. Talagang uniform siya. Isang klaseng product lang talaga siya na kailangan kong i-benta. But when you engage into a business, it's very important that you select the correct product na ibebenta depending on your target market. Kasi sila yung magdedetermine ano yung kailangan product because you have to remember the product that you should be selling should be needed by your target market. Another decision that you are making if you are in business is the selection of channel distribution. So what do we mean by this? Paano mong ipaparating yung produkto sa iyong customers? So would you have a physical store? Would you utilize the delivery system. So, ganun siya. But in my case, in my experience as a perfume seller, ako yung mismo nagde-deliver right after work. Kasi usually naman ang aking mga uh, customers nun is mga katrabaho lang din. So, nasa school lang din sila. So, ako din yung mismo nagde-deliver sa kanila. So, that is the... Ang decision na nangyari sa akin nun is ako ba, da, ako ba talaga dapat yung gagawa? Kaya ba ng oras ko yun? Okay, hindi ba ako mapapagod ng gusto? Baka naman mapabayaan ko yung trabaho ko. So, that is a decision for me to make. Pero, kinaya naman siya during that time. Okay? Aside from that, um, another decision na pinag-iisipan natin kapag tayo nasa business is yung selection of promotion strategy. When we say promotion strategy is, how do you make your product known to your market? So, anong decision yung pinag-iisipan ko niyan na? Uh, nung mga time na yon Pinag-isipan ko, gagawa ba ako ng FB page? Uh, sulit ba kung gagawa ako ng FB page? Um, wais ba kung ako ay magkagawa ng FB page? Sasagot ako ng queries doon. Tapos, o kung mas okay ba na sa aking personal FB account na lang. And then, bukod doon, pinag ko din, ano pa bang klaseng promotional strategy? Yung okay, pero hindi ako masyadong gagastos. Diba? So, ang ginawa ko noon during that time is discount. Okay? I was selling the perfume at 199 pesos per bottle. 50 ml yun. Ayan. And then, kapag kalimbawa may mga special occasions, Father's Day, per, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, mga ganyan, I give 5% off per bottle. So, nababawasan yung aking profit. So, that is a decision for me to make. Para may promote yung product ko, Sulit ba? Tama ba? Na ako ay magbawas ng aking presyo sa pagbibenta. So, ganun siya. That is a decision for you to make kapag ka nasa business ka. Selection of pricing strategy. So, somewhat related sa sinabi ko kanina. So, pricing strategy. 
paano mo pe-pressure ngayon yung produkto mo? Kasi in my case, as a seller before of a per perfume, fixed yung price namin. Talagang 199 pesos mo siyang ibibenta. Fixed din yung profit na 75 pesos per bottle. Ganun siya. Pero pag kayo ay nasa business na nga po, uh, you have to think, paano mong pe-pressuhan ng maayos yung produkto mo na in the same way, ikaw ay kumikita tapos affordable para sa iyong mga target customers. So, ganun po siya. So, pag-iisipan mo, eto pagka pinataw ko tong presyo na to sa produktong binibenta ko, kikita pa ba ako? Kasi, baka naman ginagawa mong affordable yung product sa iyong customer, pero hindi ka nagbe-benefit as a businessman. Kasi, it's not charity. You are doing business. So, dapat meron ka talagang profit na makukuha. So, balikan ko yung sinabi ko kanina na I give 5% off kapag may mga special occasions. Technically, nababawasan lang ako ng around 15 pesos. And still, okay pa rin naman. Kasi nga, hindi naman ako gumagasa sa pag-deliver ng mga perfume kasi nga, mostly mga kakilala ko lang din and katrabaho. So, yung 15 pesos na yun, minsan lang naman siya. So, I think that is still a good decision that I have made. Kasi kahit pa paano naman, pagka mas maraming nag-a-avail, kasi nga mababa yung presyo mo, nakikilala na nila, so, uulit at uulit lang sila ng pag-order sa'yo. Okay? Kasi that is one uh, technique in marketing. Yung ipipenetrate mo, yung iyong market, through Minsan, magandang uh, promotion ads, ganyan. Pero sometimes, it's in the way of low prices. At kapag na-penetrate mo na sila, saka mo itataas yung presyo. That's marketing strategy, ba diba? But in my case, ako nga, dahil nga yun naman ay seasonal, they are aware that for that particular period of time, yung 5% off ay doon lang effective. And then pagkatapos ng period of time na yun, balik na ako sa presyo ko na 199 pesos. So, ganun siya. And then lastly, you also make decision about the business model. Napakaraming business model na pwede mong gawin kapag gusto mo talaga mag-engage in two business. Okay, pwedeng ikaw corporate type, ganyan. But in my case, nung ako ay nasa perfume journey, nandun ako sa network marketing business model. Yun yung uh, konsepto ng business, perfume business na uh, ginagawa ko dati. Nasa, in short, networking. Ayan, so nabanggit yung salatang networking. So that's another decision for me to make. So nung binanggit sa akin to, in offer lang kasi actually this perfume journey I had was offered by a friend na mahilig talaga kasi siyang rumakit. Mahilig siyang omextra. So in offer niya sa akin kung gusto na extra income. Then of course, who would not want to have an extra income? Diba? Hindi naman, uh, I mean, talagang at this generation, at this time, talagang advisable magkaroon ng multiple sources of income. Hindi dapat tayo nag-depend lang doon sa ating income from our job. Dapat meron talagang other, yung other sources of income. So anyway, yun nga, in-offer na sa akin. So the decision I have to make is networking. Should I grab it or not? Diba? So hindi naman kasi maganda talaga yung networking image dito sa Philippines. But if you would study the meaning of the word networking na tinatawag din multi-level marketing or networking network marketing ayan hindi siya kasi yung ibig sabihin natin ng networking dito sa Philippines ang konsepto kasi natin ng networking dito sa Philippines is yung pyramid scheme de ba yun talaga yung scam so what's the difference between the two when we say network marketing independent selling meron kang binibentang produkto and whatever your profit is iyo yun Okay? Which happened to me. Nung nagbibenta ako ng mga bottles of perfume, yung 75 pesos per bottle na nakukuha ko. Akin yun. Wala nang, ano yun, wala nang uh, commission doon. Yung friend ko na nag-recruit sa akin, yung higher ups, wala. What? Talaga yung 75 pesos. Akin yun. Independent selling yun. Basta, ang amin noon, huwag kang lalayo doon sa 199 pesos na selling price o SRP ng company. Second, yes, there is recruitment of agents. Ito, isa to sa mga naging basehan ko nung kung tatanggapin ko. Though, ang good thing no, nung nasa perfume business ako nun, hindi required. I mean, meron kang uh, agent na nakuha or na-recruit o wala, okay lang, kikita ka pa din. Pero pagka meron kang nakuha, meron kang naging reseller, yes, you'll have a commission. Diba? So, may meron kong commission na makukuha doon. So, pinag-isipan ko rin yun. Kasi, marami talaga ngayon na hindi ka makakakuha ng payout na sinasabi kapag walang 
uh, na-recruit na bagong member. So, nung sinabi naman niya sa akin na safe, na hindi mo kinakailangan, hindi siya required, okay lang yon. So, decision yon. Now, pag sinabi natin pyramid scheme kasi, it's more of like this. You just recruit and recruit people. Then you ask money from them, pero wala namang product. That's pyramid scheme. But networking, that's, that's different from that. Merong produkto sa network marketing. So, if I was not able to train in that kind of thinking, tapos mali pala yung sinasabi sa anong kaibigan ko, buti na lang, kaibigan talaga siya, ba? Diba? So, at least I was safe. Kumita talaga ako nun. And legal siya, de ba? So I look for evidences, I ask for papers and permit. Tinig ko yung website nila, tinig ko din yung mga tao na related don, sino pa yung mga ibang reseller. And those are evidences. Those became a uh, basis for me to make decision na asigen ah, networking yung business model na tong perfume na to. Dapat ko ba siyang i-grab? legal ba siya? So, decision, that is a decision for me to make during that time. So, I was able to be a reseller of that perfume for just months lang. May kli lang kasi nung lumipat na rin naman ako in the public school system, medyo matakaw na rin sa oras. So, hindi ko na rin kinaya. And that is another decision for me to make. I have this another source of income. Pakakawalan ko kasi lumipat ako ng public at matakaw sa oras. Worth it ba? And during that time, yes, it was worth it na medyo pakawalan muna siya kasi nga, I was adjusting. Ayoko rin namang mag-suffer yung health ko nun. But then again, there is decision making in that situation. Okay? And kung hindi natin matitrain yung mind natin to think in that way, to find connections, um, patterns dun sa situations na yun, hindi tayo magka-come up sa mga decisions na dapat na gawin natin. So yun siya. So, we have already appreciated the importance of math. The question now is, why is it important for us to have that decision-making skill? So, take note, decision-making is a skill, okay? It is not just applicable in business, but also in your personal lives, lalo na yung mga choices na ginagawa natin. Because having good decision-making skill will help you to make better choices. Kasi nga, marunong ka na mag-analyze ng situation eh. Kaya mo nang i- i-critical analysis yung isang bagay, then from there, you could make a proper solution, a good choice, ba? Diba? Aside from that, through decision making, kapag maganda yung choices mo, you can come up with bigger decisions kasi yung mga choices na ginagawa nyo po ngayon mga anak, lahat ng yan, that would lead you to bigger situations na makaka to sa future ninyo. Kaya ngayon pa lang, you should know how to make good choices kasi lahat ng choices na yan, factor yan para sa future ninyo. And then, sa future na yun, mas marami pang decisions na kailangan ninyong gawin. Ayan. And, in business, this will make or break your business. Bilang isang businessman, businesswoman, or any entrepreneur, napaka-importante ng decision making, lalo na uh, regardless of the size of your business, malaki o maliit man yan, talagang importante na meron kayong good decision making skill, lalo na kapag may tao na under ninyo. Yan, it's very important to have a good decision making because that could make or break your business. So, to end, my sharing to you in this video Ang gusto ko lang namang iparating sa inyo is, in your life, you are faced with a lot of choices. Ang dami-daming situa- situation dyan, you are with different choices, but you have to make the right decision. So, you have to think critically, you have to analyze the situation so that you'll come up with a good or right decision. Because that right decision, whatever your decision is, that would affect your future. And that future could be good or bad, depending on the choice and decision you made. So, as of this moment, habang bata pa kayo, you train your mind. Diba? Train your mind to be critical thinkers, to be problem solvers, to be analysts, to be logical thinkers. And one of the ways na makakatulong sa inyo para mag-isip ng ganun is math. So, keep calm and love math. So, I hope you have learned something 
in this video and by this time sana na share ko sa inyo yung insights ko na kung saan matututunan ninyong i-appreciate yung beauty ng math and paano siyang nagiging factor para maging good decision makers tayo not only in our professional or career endeavors but also in our professional lives ayan Again, I am Miss Carla Joyce B. Navarrete, hoping that you have learned something from me today and stay safe and happy. Thank you so much.